and welcome to Wellhouse Kitchen. My name is Liz Reddish and I am super pleased to have you with us today. Um, I am going to be here with my lovely guest, Abby Adams, who is the founder of Project Woman. She is a very dear friend of mine and we met on our kinesiology course. How many years ago? Two years. 21, so two years. Two years ago. So Abby and I are very familiar with the journey around nutrition and we are here to share some of our tools, ideas, tips um, on how you can navigate some of your um, challenges perhaps around finding the right nutrition for you. So Abs, tell me a little bit about yourself to start with. This is a story that I like to tell. <laughs> Where do I start Liz? Where do I start? Well I suppose I start with us, you know like Liz says we met kinesiology in our training but prior to that I was moved to join this circle of people because of my fascination with what goes on underneath the skin not just from a hormonal perspective but from an emotional perspective because we like we know don't we deeply how really your emotions are the foundation of your health and if you get these in a sweet spot everything else is so much easier but that's not to say that it's not a continual work in progress such as nutrition you know when was it the other day that I hit upon the realisation that although I'm not copying my mum's relationship with food, I had transferred it into a different communication, hadn't I? Which was me seeing it as a... I suppose it was a bit stressful, really, weren't it? Because it was all about fueling. I'm very into my movement. I Part of Project Woman is you understand how to move with your hormones so that you are not depleting the body. And I, I it became very linear. Yeah. You know, it was just about fueling. You can't feel that until you have someone guide you to feel that. You know, it's like the, the, the wood through the trees, isn't it? And that was what happened when working with you. So Absolutely, and I think perhaps we can both share a little bit of that journey in terms of my background was I had um, eating disorders, um, which started in my teens, I think, um, when I was, I lost a bit of weight purely because I was so excited. I, I lost my appetite. I had a first boyfriend and I lost a lot of weight and I got so much positive feedback around that. So suddenly it was that reinforcement that actually when you lose weight, when you look a certain way, you're liked and all the rest of it. So I suddenly associated then, of course, with being a certain weight, with, um, with being okay and being and my mum particularly gave me a lot of um, positive feedback. So unfortunately then, of course, I went started this pattern of starving myself and then getting so starved, starved I, I was then needing to, oh, well, I binged, and then, uh, then the bulimia kicked in and so on and so forth. But actually before that, I realised that my digestive system had always been slightly out of balance. Mm. So w with the knowledge that I have now, I realised that perhaps if I had known about these foods that were perhaps depleting my energy and my um, system was struggling with, then I wouldn't have been overweight mm. in the first place. So this whole kind of journey around food became really, well, stressful until actually much later on in my life. But it wasn't until I saw a kinesiologist that I realised this healthy diet that I thought I had landed on course was not working for me and that's the difference um, now in terms of how I've learned to uh, to do to, to work with my um, with my nutrition much better so so I think it's that the, the nutritional um, aspect of food that you would perhaps go and speak to a nutritionalist about is not what this is about this is about the energetic relationship that we have our with our food and mm. understanding like you say that that can also change uh, depending on where you're at with other things and the emotional context of that too. Unless you forget the joy in food. Absolutely, the and joy. this has become my love language, hence why we are presenting this and hopefully giving you some really lovely inspiration, recipes that you can use yourself. So this is dairy-free, gluten-free, um, no sugars, um, and it's a lovely Tuscan mushroom soup that's really wholesome and balanced with plenty of protein um, and carbohydrates. and we got some nice homemade bread being made in the background as well. So shall we get started? We're going to have a party <laughs> in the kitchen! <laughs> so I'm going to delegate my mushrooms to you. So if you can just slice these up. Liz has also given me the biggest <laughs> knife. 
ever. So I'm going to have to behave myself, otherwise she may attack. So now, can I just, I never forget, I was cutting <laughs> peppers for my best friend's mum's party. And I cut them and her mum came over and went, you've done those wrong. Oh gosh. Is there, scarred for life. <laughs> Is there a way that you would like me to cut your mushrooms? No, I was just going to say, be creative. Thanks. This right, is, off this, she goes. And actually, this is something I really want to share with you is that so many people lack confidence in the kitchen. I am somebody that will look at a recipe and in fact, I've printed one out here and already I've modified it. So it's really an opportunity for you to see what you enjoy and then we can give you some pointers as to perhaps ways that you can make it your own. So yeah, make, make the, uh, or cut, cut them however you wish and I'm gonna do the same with the onion here. So we're just peeling the onion. So it's one onion and uh, I think they suggest it's about 200 grams of mixed mushrooms. So we've only got the chestnut mushrooms there. Um, but hopefully, you know, we're sitting here in, we're going into winter, but I don't know about you, when you go out on your walk to the dogs, how many mushrooms do you see? Do you know what I saw one this morning? And I said a little good morning to the mushroom. I do like to talk to the trees and, the, <laughs> and mother nature. Yeah. My neighbours find it fascinating, especially when I'm out there. So I tend to, when I walk the dog, I don't like taking my pyjamas off because they're very warm. So you'll see me up in the park in my pajamas, in boots, a woolly hat, with this very skinny dog <laughs> called Bear. And then I'm calling in spirit, talking to trees. My husband refuses to walk with me first thing in the morning and I can see why. Oh, I love it, I love it. Yeah, but there's nothing like that early morning walk. I was out there this morning on the beach actually and um, and I don't wish to make anyone feel like they're uh, missing out, but I have to say, I I took to the early morning practice. I don't know, is that something you do, Abs? Mm. Um, so I get up before the world, so at quarter to six my alarm clock goes, and I take take to the countryside, and in, in this case this morning I went down to the beach, and the stars, the canopy of stars above my head, and the lapping of the waves just was absolutely magical. That's one thing that you don't, have access to being in London um, was this wonderful vista of stardust when you moved down to Devon. Mm. It, is, it is so magic and having two small children you get to rekindle that magic through their eyes and it is such a glorious feeling. You remember what life is really all about. I'm not saying that you didn't get that in London but you can feel it more. Mm. You know there's a deeper connection perhaps. Since moving so. down, totally understanding the art of receiving. It really is an art. You have to take time to receive. And that comes down to a lot of uh, emotional um, nurturing as well, I think, isn't it? I think absolutely. We're all, we can be all very busy in our heads, can't we? When we're, when we're juggling lots, many of us have got very busy uh, lifestyles with children or um, families, friendships, work, um, and everything in between. And I think actually to just quiet in the mind, I'm working with somebody recently and they went on a holiday and having worked with me now for over a year, he just, he just said, this is the first time I've ever experienced nothing in my head. Mm, that's so nice. Which, sorry, the onions are making me cry <laughs> rather than <laughs> Bring know, the, bring it does, it's not unusual for me to be crying to be fair we've already had a moment this morning <laughs> um, but uh, not on this occasion it's the onions so we're going to add now so interestingly butter is a, a fascinating ingredient in that for many people with dairy intolerances of which I'm one of them butter can still be tolerated so it might be something to exper experiment a little bit with uh, for yourself because in my opinion and you may agree with this is I think the more or the less processed things are, the more raw in their ingredient, the easier it is for the body to mm -hmm. digest. And, and essentially, butter is just fat. Mm -hmm. So if we can get a good quality butter, then I think that's the one to go Although, for. don't do what my dad did at Christmas with the Swede and put a whole butter <laughs> in there. Butter. And my, my husband nearly passed out. It's, did you see what your dad's done? <laughs> Gallbladder would have to Taking it just a that. little bit too far. <laughs> So I've just put a, a, a knob of butter in. I'm not sure what I was meant to do. Um, two tablespoons, it says, of dairy-free sunflower spread in the in the recipe. But like I say, I'm using real butter. And we're going to start by 
actually sautéing the mushrooms. So we're going to just fry those off, get them going. I and love mushrooms for breakfast. And my eyes are being opened to the, I mean, the variety of mushroom we have is phenomenal. It is. Do you forage mushrooms? Is that something you... Well, um, not personally, but there's a great guy in Exeter whose name is Fungi. I mean, <laughs> how that. epic is that? What, as in a... He, so genuinely he, his name. Is he's a nice, could you imagine? I'd love some experience if it was. I've known some funny, funny names in my time. But <laughs> that's his business now. I was going to say. Um, sure. And he, he forages mushrooms, but he also um, creates uh, the powders. Oh, yeah, which is really nice. Adaptogenic mm. mushrooms like lion's mane, and yeah. reishi, and all of those. Mm. Yeah, fantastic. They are particularly therapeutic, aren't they? But yeah, mushrooms I think are, are very good. Um, they're actually quite high in protein as well, aren't they? Mm. Um, as well as many other vitamins and minerals. Um, I'm not going to list them because I don't have them on the top of my head, but you can easily research them if you want to. So whilst we're letting that do its thing, yes. I know, Abs, you are, like you say, in this sort of process of trying to refine your diet for you in this moment. Mm. You've talked about your hormonal changes and things. So is there anything particular that you just want to check in with? As we're in the kitchen, we can just pull out some ingredients and do some muscle testing just to kind of demonstrate the kinesiology that we use. So I am an addict to nut butter. Um, so I'd like to revisit that. Sure. And perhaps look at the flowers again that we tried last time. Okay. So when you say nut butter, have you got particular preferences? I mean, so I did a test with Liz before and almond butter came up. Yeah. Um, as the one that you could because I was using I was using a lot of peanut butter yeah so we've got almond butter here and we've got some peanut butter so yeah. should we see so what we tend to do I'm just going to remove my jewelry there we're going to use a muscle that we can create as an indicator muscle so we'll just come this way a little bit just so you get a visual so I'm going to bring Abby's arm in front of her and I'm just going to ask her just to maintain that position so she's holding that position I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure and I want you to match the pressure out, okay? And we just notice, how does that feel? You'll notice there's no movement in the arm, so that suggests that it's an easy, what we call a lock. So there's no issue there around holding it. And just now I'm going to just take the energy away from that circuit and just notice now what happens. So I'm applying the pressure <laughs> and the muscle switches off. So I'm actually just going to now, I've just brought the energy back up, so we're um, bringing the energy along the meridian in the, in the right direction, and that's restored the energy pathway. Mm -hmm. Did you agree? Yes. So we're now going to connect with the back of your head, and this is a point that connects with the whole of your energy circuit. So it's quite useful when we're working with nutrition just to check how it's going to reflect, reflect in the whole of the energy circuit. And at the moment, that's all nice and balanced. Yes. So we can now bring... The butter, the crunching up peanut butter, next to your <coughs> parotid gland. So this is the one that creates the saliva. And we're going to connect again with the back here, and I'm just going to apply the pressure. And I'm just going to double check that it's not gone into a stress response. And interestingly, that that was coming up as an intolerance before seems to be okay, doesn't it? It would be, wouldn't it? So let's just compare that to our almond If this butter. says that almond butter is now off, I'll be so upset because I really like almond butter now. Come on. So just, this is where we try not to influence it. No, no, we don't <laughs> influence it. Not your mind. Just do that again. No, you're all right. I think you were just getting involved. Where were you? Going on there. So what's been going on with your almond butter? Tell me, when you say you've become... Not addictive, but I, I have it on my breakfast with the mu with muesli or yoghurt. So I might one. have it every day. So you have it every day? Yeah. Okay. So it's interesting, isn't it, that before you were having your peanut butter every day and that was then indicated as a possible intolerance or depleting your energy, and then now it's switched over. Mm. So what's the moral of that story, do you think? Don't have it every day. 
<laughs> Do you think that may be the thing? Maybe. How Ooh. wonderful, I get to eat both. I was going to say, I would suggest what's showing up is maybe that little or little yeah. of variety is the key. Yes. So let's, let's look at that in relation to our different um, flowers. So we've, I've only got some basic things here. So we've got some basic plain white So brown. emotionally, as Liz gets this, this out of the drawer, my whole state goes... <laughs> just saying. Why is that? Because it's bad for you. Because it's bad white. for you because it's white? Because it's white. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So can we see already how our emotional relationship with certain foods mm. is possibly going to affect your system before we start? So let's just think about that before we even bring it into your cy yeah. circuit. And let's just see how that reflects in your muscle testing. Do you see how you've gone? <laughs> but if you look back to our training and the things that we got taught, I mean, that is a no-go. I agree. Yeah. And I'm not saying it is the right thing, but it's just so interesting, isn't it, how we can get very connected to things. Absolutely. And I, what I have noticed myself over the years is that, that good girl archetype and being the chameleon where you take on a lot of other people's stuff, which is something that I am so aware of now, um, and how that changes your dynamic as, a, as an individual, as a human being, and as someone that has a lot of personal creativity. You know, it has a really big impact, doesn't it? Yeah. And it's just trusting in yourself that your intuitive voice knows. Just let yourself speak. And most importantly, listen to yourself. Yeah, and I think this is what this work is so brilliant at, isn't it? It's like, get out of your head and let's let the body give you the feedback. Yeah. Um, and I think so often we can get so lost in the ideas of what we think is right, mm. and actually our body says something completely different. Yeah. Fantastic. So should we just, for the fun of it, just bring that into the circuit? Because it's so much fun. Oh. <laughs> oh, hang on. And we're just going to see how that feels now. So I've got a lock, would you agree with that? Yeah. Let's just take the energy in the opposite direction. And we've still got a lock. So that suggests that it is a stressor mm -hmm. to the system, which is probably a true reflection yeah. of what it's gonna do for your system anyway. Yeah. So is there anything in particular that you think, actually, I'd really like that we haven't tested? I mean, is that enough for you t for today, or would you like to I think try a banana? Banana. Because I read by uh, Eve, and I can never remember her surname, Eve Kalanis, I believe her name is, she's a gut specialist. I read in her book that a unripe banana is actually a prebiotic. Mm. And what I have found in the latter stages of my menstrual cycle, so when you go past ovulation, if I have a banana for breakfast, it really helps in my digestion and helping me go to the toilet. Oh. Yeah. Let's see if that's true. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> Di it. Dialing into that intuitive voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. We are serious professionals. <laughs> um, hold. And let's just check that it hasn't blown the circuit. Nice. So it's feeling good? Cool. So in this sort of um, muscle monitoring, what we're showing is when the energy is depleted or stressing the circuit, but what we're not showing is perhaps if it's raising the energy. Mm. So often when we're working in a kinesiology session, if a muscle is not locking or it's a, a part of the meridian system is, is unlocking as we call it, so imbalanced, we can use actually different foods to see what would elevate that energy and allow the flow back into the system so i remember a client came who had had chronic sort of digestional unsettledness just feeling really uncomfortable and uh and it was a nutritional balance that was required and a lemon just placed on her tummy <laughs> throughout the balancing procedure balanced the whole lot she was good as gold after that in terms of her it's amazing her symptoms so it's amazing isn't it how just the energetic quality of something can just revitalize the system get the energy flow so the body then can come back into balance so that it can heal and that's just what it's all about for me. And I think when you look at this you tend to think of it being a little bit far out but 
if you if you look into the scientific aspect of kinesiology, what you're actually supporting is the 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 nerves and the ganglia that come out the spine. And these nerves feed the organs, and for that organ, it will feed a specific muscle. And so that's what you're tapping into. It's the intelligence of the spine and its communication. So it's not so woo-woo as what you think it is. It's actually a really great non-invasive process that allows your body to speak. And that's what I love about kinesiology. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Just to come back to the cooking, so we've added our onion to the pot pot we've sorted the mushrooms and now we're going to peel and chop four cloves of garlic in the meantime can i get you to chop the pepper the pepper <laughs> spring back traumatic memories okay Again, i can do this I can however, do however you fancy it does say four centimeter cubes <laughs> who's got the biggest size that's, 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 that's hilarious so no please be creative however it comes I don't know about you guys, but I just love cooking with other people. Mm. I think it's something so lovely about exchanging. Well, it's a great place to chat, isn't it? Because I think it's a bit like um, sometimes a direct conversation can be too direct, can't it? I know with my kids, it's a great space for quality conversation because we're not necessarily looking at each other and things come out. Um, but also I think, you know, there's all that... I don't know, the, the Eastern society, the Eastern cultures are so much more about eating together, creating mm. together, aren't they? And, and Mediterranean, to be fair. Well, have you seen on uh, Netflix, is it the, centen the, the Centennials of How to Live to 100? Um, and I haven't watched that. they filmed, the, the, the one that really hit home was the Italian, the, in Italy, or around Italy. Yeah. And it was the fact that all of the families and the friends come together and, and cook together. It's a real... It's just really important, isn't it? And how beautiful it is. I think so, and taking time over cooking as well. I think, our, sadly, our society is always, we want instant, instant fixes. And, um, and I've really learned to really bring out the flavors of our food. Actually, it really requires time and a low, low heat often. So um, I think that's the thing I would encourage you to do if you can is, Prepare food when you've got time. You know, I do a lot of food cooking at the weekends um, in, t in readiness for the weekend, and it, sorry, readiness for the week ahead. So I might create some uh, sauces or um, marinades or, you know, some, like you, you were saying about the muesli or whatever, I might do some homemade um, granola or different bits and bobs that I can turn to whenever, you know, there isn't so much time as well. Do you know, I, I lived in India, I was studying yoga and yoga therapy, and in one of the ashrams that we stayed in, she showed us how to make the Indian uh, porridge, which is just unbelievable. And one of the people that was in that workshop went to stir it anti-clockwise and she went, you stir it clockwise because that's the love. But also that's the direction yeah. of your digestive system, isn't it? Yeah. It was so fascinating. Oh, wow. you know, you're, it's not just the ingredients that you're putting in to the food, is it? Like you said, you're actually putting in an intention. You're putting in energy. And again, coming back to kinesiology, that's really, and yoga actually, what's opened my eyes to the fact that we are more than just this physical body. We're, we're energy, you mm. know? And what is the pulse of your energy? What is, the, what is the soul of your energy? Because that is the ultimate communication, isn't it? Absolutely. And what I also learned was different organs within our system hold a different frequency range and actually different foods will resonate at a different frequency and often if you're depleted in a particular organ then you're then craving a particular food mm. to balance it and it just yeah once you get into the headspace of energy then suddenly whether it be the color you know you're drawn to certain people colours, you know, when you wake up in the morning, what do you put on? And here I am, very bright. <laughs> but I really notice that, you know, what are people wearing? What are, who am I attracted to? Who am I actually repelled by? You know, we all know those drains and, and radiators mm. in life, don't we? And it's, it's fascinating once you connect more and more into those things. Mm. Um, we, can, uh, we can start to really understand what we do need and recognise that that changes all the time as well. How are you getting on? So they, they can be thrown into the pot. Literally. Yeah, go for it. And then uh, give that a stir. Garlic's busy being chopped here as well. 
But actually going back to food and sharing food, it's interesting because, um, again, with my, my clients, many of my clients have quite a negative association with sitting at the dinner table and um, it's not always a comfortable place. You know, it can be a place where many family rows have broken out or perhaps there's this pressure to eat up everything on your plate or you're going to sit there until you've eaten all your food. You know, all mm. of these old stories that have played out for people and how that also reflects now in when they eat food, actually their digestion is compromised because it's so tangled mm. from those trauma traumatic experiences that actually, how do you digest it? Well, we were speaking earlier, weren't we? I've, I've got this real um, seesaw at home. You know, we had the old, dinner on the on the tray do you remember the the metal trays where the legs went pop pop oh yeah do you remember that yes. like i remember having those and just watching tv whereas at my grandparents my nan and my granddad would allow me to cook and i remember you know standing on the chair the chair was backwards i mean health and safety <laughs> absolutely kicked off but cooking and then making this buffet where you could you could choose what you wanted and just this morning, talking about that made me realise how important choice was for me at a very young age because in other aspects of my life I didn't have a lot of choice. Yeah. So that was a real eye-opener into, into having that as a child and able me to perhaps process other areas of my life. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and I think often, again, when people are given the feedback that perhaps certain foods are not, necessarily powering them up or are creating some of the discomfort and digestional issues that are presenting themselves suddenly it's like well what can I eat then and how am I going to feed my family mm. and I think um, what I've realized is so within our family just to <laughs> share is that I am intolerant to dairy wheat actually gluten and refined sugars my daughter is gluten free my son is dairy free my husband denies all <laughs> no, I love him he basically is he's the well we talk about yin and yang he's definitely uh, brings balance to our home I just I, the, the vision I got then was God <laughs> what my husband oh, yeah oh bless him yeah I don't there, I, don't I, I'm not that. intolerated by anything <laughs> no I'm tolerated by all of that um, and so actually you know from that point of view catering for a family with all those different needs has meant that we've had to go on a little bit of a journey and find the things that you know for example for us now gluten-free pasta for those people who tolerate gluten there's no compromise so it's it's fine we, yeah. we just stick to gluten-free pasta um, pancakes on a Saturday morning that's our, um, our little routine that we look forward to again that's gluten-free and dairy-free so my son can enjoy that too, um, as can I now. And uh, and we just, yeah, slowly sort of finding our different ways. And I think, like you say, if you can create some fun around and experimentation and creativity around those choices, mm. then suddenly it feels less restricting and less of a punishment. Because so many people, well, you know, if, if I can't have that, then what can I eat? Yeah. Yeah. But actually, when I was... Um, when it was determined, suggested that some of these foods were um, depleting me, there weren't, weren't half of the alternatives that there are today. Mm. Um, I feel that like you've got to be careful though with some alternatives. Because there's just as that. much I agree. not nice stuff in them as not being gluten free or whatever it is. You know, you look on the back of a packet and they've just filled it with absolute. I won't swear because of the algorithm. <laughs> But yeah, like I said, absolute rubbish. So you, it really is being conscious about what is on that label. You know, I've, I've, I've got a good friend, Kirsty, well, good friends, Kirsty and uh, Luke, who run Pink's Boutique. They're an organic skincare brand. And she was big on the message about greenwashing. Right. You know, yeah. a long time ago, a company could say they was natural um, and only have 1% of natural pro ingredients in their products. Oh, wow. Phenomenal, isn't yeah. it? And that's what they say about the greenwashing because our eyes see a lovely plant or we see green and we see natural and we immediately presume because we trust that it's all alright, but when you turn it around you see that that's not the case. Absolutely, and I think that's right about many 
many different sort of diets as well. People who say, oh, it's vegan, therefore it must be healthy. Yeah. And again, I think, let's be careful. Yes, you can be a very healthy vegan. I'm not saying that it is um, unhealthy, but I'm saying it's very hard to be a healthy vegan, actually. So I'm smiling, I'm smiling like a maniac because I can smell basil. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my God! You are so missing out right now because the smells are unbelievable. Well, do you know, that's, that just ignites something then, isn't it? Energetically. It gets me very excited. Yeah. I won't tell my husband. <laughs> oh, you should. Oh, yeah, I should. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So I've just put some thyme in here as well. And we're going to now add the bay leaves. How do you tend to add bay leaves? Do you just shove them in or do you break oh, them in half? I just put them in. Do you? Depends how strong we want the flavour. Let's just put them in as we've got two big bay leaves there. And then we're going to, uh, what I've done actually on the side here is I've just put some quinoa uh, with a bit of water in it and a stock cube because quinoa, I don't know if you know this, but it has all the essential amino acids in it which I haven't appreciated. So it's a really great one if you haven't got any of the um, protein coming from meat and fish and those sort of things, then quinoa is a great one. So it would just we can add that as a bit of an additional bulking agent to on our the, soup. On the flip side of this, something that I have found recently in regards to women that aren't experiencing quite, dis not disturbing, disturbing is too strong a word, but perimenopausal symptoms to redu actually reduce your grains could be quite beneficial yeah you can't what the carbohydrate no As grains, in just grains not carbohydrate. Not, yeah so that doesn't include quinoa does it does it yeah just I to didn't play think around quinoa was a grain but to play around with it oh interesting yeah. so just having a look at that because okay. i was eating i was eating quite a lot of quinoa but obviously I realise now that diversity is key. Thanks Liz, mm. peanut butters and all that jazz. Yeah. Um, but just note to self, if you are experiencing symptoms of perimenopause and you've tried this and you've tried that, perhaps it could be having a look at grains and similar. Interesting, yeah. I mean, I think this is the thing, different people's metabolisms, constitutions will definitely um, reflect different requirements and actually I think this is a valid point isn't it so often and I have this a lot with particularly ladies who say you know everything that's worked for me in the past it just doesn't work anymore why is it suddenly now that I can't have this and you can share why well as we get it's we've we've not been privy to the understanding of what I call the evolutionary changes so you've got your puberty you've got your menstruation which we also class as fertility then you've got perimenopause and then you've got menopause all of these are evolutionary changes within the um, female physiology and they all require just a different change in tact and as we start to transition into perimenopause which is really just it's a bridge from menstruation to menopause. It requires, I mean, I, 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 for me, this is a time of pure celebration for women. You know, you've done the hard work. You've grafted, you've given, you might have had a family, and family in whatever shape that, that looks like for you. And now it's time to, to put the focus on you. Um, and with that comes a, a change in foods to look at your nutrition, to look at the way you are exercising because we now know that as you come into this point because of the changing in blood sugars to balance that working on your strength and your muscle is so important and it can be a game changer as to how you transition through this time especially emotionally so look at building that muscle from this point onwards if you haven't done because it can really change the way you experience perimenopause and menopause. Yeah, no, it's fascinating, isn't it? Just um, on the side, whilst you've been sharing, I've just added some paprika, so a, a tablespoon, is that right? <laughs> Not got the measurements wrong. A tablespoon of paprika um, and a teaspoon of um, oregano, so that's gone in, and then I've chopped up six uh, sun-dried tomatoes, which I've put in as well. Just to say, how did you not eat one of those? Who can <laughs> cut up sun-dried tomatoes and not eat one? 
Yeah, they are very Moorish. Are they? I think I'm just in that zone. I'm being very well behaved here. Uh, I've even washed my hands in between times. Because <laughs> usually know. she doesn't. No. <laughs> Don't give away my secrets. <laughs> so now I'm just adding some water to the pot. So we're now creating the soup. And I'm going to add my stock cubes to that as well. I know you're meant to create your stock first and then pour that in. I think um, there's some there's some really good quality stocks out there. Um, and I have to say, I, I've not necessarily got the best quality one here. But um, it was a last minute dot com. So we've got some uh, vegetable stock cubes here going in, um, which I tend to just add to the pot. Do you ever, so if I want to replace a stock cube, do you ever use the um, chickens, the homemade chickens? Oh yeah. yeah, the broth. Yeah, homemade chicken broth. Mm -hmm. I do. So good for you as well, mm. isn't it? I mean, the, there's been many studies to suggest that um, bone broth is particularly healing for the gut, isn't it? Mm. So um, yeah, that's another recipe that I think we'll share mm. at some point because again, it's not something that we do a lot of. We tend to just eat the meats, don't we? And we often buy the different um, meats without the bones these days. Well, we, we've got into a real habit at home. My, my husband is a really good cook um, and he loves it. Every time we have a roast chicken, we'll save those bones and it goes immediately into stock and it just becomes a habit it's like most things in life isn't it it's just a it's a muscle that you choose to flex and if you continue to flex it it gets stronger so every time and you get so much from it it's fantastic you really do and i think it's really worth spending some money actually on a decent quality chicken oh my god when you're going to use all of it as well you just feel like yeah it's, it's worth absolutely investing. and i think that goes to you know, goes without saying about all food, actually. I mean, I'm very conscious of the, the economic climate at the moment, and we've been on that journey of looking at place, you know, where areas that we can cut costs. And the food side of things is has been a real conflict in this house because my husband, as I've just shared, <laughs> he's a he's a McDonald's man, and you know, he's he's really not bothered, and vegetables definitely are not his uh, his treasure in life. Um, but I am from the opposite side of the fence where nutrition is very much um, my food, my nourishment, but also it's, it's my love language, it's every part of me. So we kind of met in the middle with it. Um, but certainly I feel as things are hopefully easing off a bit, that's definitely the first area that I will be mm. going back to the local, you know, the local butchers, the bakers and the candlestick makers really. I like, so I'm, I'm like you, and my little boy said to me the other day, Mum, why do you spend so much money on food? I just said, because I value it so much. Mm. I value it. I know the difference. When I don't eat something that is of good produce, it impacts me mentally, emotionally, hormonally, physically, every, every aspect of me. Mm. And I said, what I'm doing is I'm educating you to understand how important that that is. What, wherever you are, don't ever, you know, jeopardise your relationship with food i mean I, I have said to my children many a times you know it might get to a point kids where i have to sell you so that <laughs> i can continue to eat the way that i i want to eat <laughs> only joking <laughs> only joking yeah no i think it's so important isn't it and i think if we go back to the energetic quality of our food if if the animals have had a good life mm. energetically they're going to be in a more a higher vibration mm. That will go into the meat that gets passed on to us. It's all so so connected, isn't it? And I think it's um, and and what I love about this world is that we have so much choice now. And if you choose to be a vegan and vegetarian, that's awesome. And if you choose to eat meat, that's awesome because that balance is out the planet, isn't it? Yeah, we're all looking for balance. Absolutely. So just to fill in, uh, we've done the stock. Now that's coming up to a boil, and then I'm going to add some oat cream. So this is quite a nice one actually, so I'm just going to pour in all of that. Hopefully, I say all of it. Do I want all of it? Yeah, throw it all in. I feel at this point is that you should have Wellhouse go across the screen. Wellhouse! <laughs> With your signature music. <laughs> Trumpets. There we go. So that's just going to simmer away nicely. I think that's all the ingredients. It's always good to check that you've got everything. I'm just going to add some salt and pepper. 
And I love a bit of garlic pepper. It's a bit of a secret ingredient of mine. Have you ever discovered the garlic pepper? No. Um, so, yes. If you need to just give anything a bit of a pick-me-up, then you need to grab some of that. Brilliant. So, we are just going to give that a stir. And then we've got our quinoa bubbling away. And I'm going to just add the basil. And I'm just going to let you have a little taste. And let's see. We've always got to. I have an asbestos mask and so my husband keeps telling me, that's lovely. Is it? Mm. Do you want to finish that spoon? Mm -hmm. I'll do the same. Mm. Okay. Mm. 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 I'm hoping it's going to give you that kind of hug in a mug type. Mm. Oh, it is good, isn't it? It's lovely. So I'm going to let that simmer a bit longer. We've got some quinoa that we're going to add. And then I've got some bread baking that you can um, just dip in. So we'll... I think we'll give it a wrap. We'll, we'll wrap this thing up now, shall we? And, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. And thank you so much for watching. And we will be, whether it be with Abby or with other guests that are going to come in, I'm going to continue to share stories, recipes, ideas, and hopefully support and inspiration to keep you connected and exploring what lights you up and increases your vitality. So um, do do watch this space. Thank you.